Hi everyone, this is Alex with Alex's Paw Spa and today I'm going to show you my mobile grooming van where all the dogs get their spa days. <music> So I'll go ahead and show you guys the inside. Come on in. So up here, I'm going to have a lot of my products, uh, my shampoos, sprays, stuff like that. And I'm going to have most of that over here too. So I have a lot of my cologne stuff I use every day when I bathe, um, sprays, stuff for their eyes, a lot of stuff that I've shown you in my other videos as well. I have two dryers here. I have a super powerful one and then one a little bit less powerful for those dogs that are probably a little bit nervous or maybe it's their first time getting groomed. Uh, and then I have my tub. So I have this big thing. I can do just big or small dogs in here. And if I'm doing bigger dogs, I have this ramp and then my table lifts up and down so I can actually put them on here and lift the table all the way up to the tub so nobody has to get hurt. All the big dogs, if they have bad hips or anything or I can't lift them, we just use the table to get them in there all nice and safe. Um, we do all the washing here. I have a couple vents because I know it gets pretty warm in Arizona, so it helps us all stay really cool. And then I have a super sudser that is really good. It gets a lot of shampoo and water on the dog at the same time. Makes bathing super efficient. Uh, I have a vacuum here, my trash, all of my grooming tools. So my shears are up here, my blades, my nail clippers, and all that good stuff. And then I groom them on this table. Now all, all size of dogs fit on this table. I usually have a weight limit of about 60 pounds, um, but they all fit and it moves up and down. And this is where the magic happens. And then on this side of the van, I have a spare table, which is really nice if I have several dogs in my van. A lot of times I'll take pictures of them here with a nice little background. Um, I have drawers where I keep all of my supplies and some extra shampoos, bandanas, stuff like that. I do have a little mini fridge as well to keep some cool water or some snacks or anything in there. And what I really love is I have this door that I can just walk in and out of. So if I ever need to grab anything, I can just come up here and grab it really quick. Uh, it's just the front side of my van. Uh, I have a lot of good stuff in here that I use every day. My air conditioner works amazing. Uh, I've had this van since August and I am just in love with it. And I know all of my little furry clients love it too. And then I have this door with a window and I can see out of it. So I can see if anyone's going to walk up to the van and knock on it. So I can try to, you know, make sure I'm not doing any scissoring or anything. So the dog doesn't get spooked and accidentally hurt themselves. And what I really like too is I have a couple steps. So the big dogs can walk up without like trying to jump or accidentally hurt their ankles or their hips or anything. So all these steps really help a lot for bigger dogs. And last but not least, I do have heat in here too. So I have this with a little furnace. Uh, heat comes out here. So whether it's hot or cold, I can keep everybody warm and cool enough while working in the van. So it's super comfortable for both me and the dogs. If you guys are interested in anything else, comment below and make sure you click to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Hi everyone, I have Enzo here with me today and we're gonna show you how to use a guard comb. All right, so a guard comb is basically this attachment that you put over your clippers if you want a little bit of a longer length. I always use a 15 blade under my guard combs. Um, 30 blades tend to break. Uh, I just found, I find that 15 blades work the best and I'm using a one guard on him, which is half an inch. So I'm gonna click that on. You wanna make sure that they're all brushed out. I already bathed him, brushed him out, and did his nails and pads, so he's ready to go. You want to make sure that you get a really good bath and blow out, otherwise it's not going to turn out as good of a haircut. So first, hang on. All right. So I take it along the back line. I usually go straight along the back. And then you want to go with the grain of the hair. So however the hair grows, you want to follow that. And take it down his leg. And you want to make sure that this is flat against their body. You're gonna kind of go like that. Down his leg. Skim around the tail. So third side. So I'm gonna get this back line, and then I'm gonna kind of go diagonal down like that. Follow around the stomach. It's better to take longer strokes. I usually go 
over it a couple times just to make sure that I get everything. You want to make sure too that hair is not getting stuck in here. You can kind of look and see in there and make sure that no hair is getting stuck, otherwise it will turn out uneven and we do not want that. So look at this way. Make sure you're careful if they have like dew claws or anything like that. You don't
interested in oak garden, which is one size up. All right, guys, that is how you use a guard comb. Um, I'm going to go over him one more time just to make sure I got everything. And then from there on, you just use your shears and do some trimming up. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Uh, check out my other videos to see how to do the rest of that trimming up. And make sure you click that button to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.
have Annabelle here with me today. She is a Pomeranian. Um, we are going to give her a nice bath, blow dry, and a trim up all over today. Um, we don't take too much hair off of her since she is a Pomeranian with that double coat. We don't want to damage her hair at all. Um, if you groom dogs that are double coated and you take their hair too short, um, a lot of things can happen that permanently damage the hair, such as not growing back at all, growing back in patches, different textures, different colors, and we don't want that to happen. She's very fluffy and we love her hair, so we just take a little bit off to shape her up and then clean her up and make her look out that natural look of her. Alright, now that Annabelle is all washed and rinsed, I'm going to take my K92 Velocity Dryer and dry her out. Since she's got that undercoat, we're going to try to get a lot of that out during the drying process just because it's going to make the groom look a lot nicer at the end and it's going to make it so we don't have to brush or comb her as much and put her through that as well. Um, so I'm going to move that, you can see I'm moving that dryer back and forth really fast. That gets the majority of that water off really well and helps spread that coat apart and get that undercoat out. So we're going to be drying her uh, for a little bit here and then we will take her over to my table for the grooming process. So after she's all dry, I have her on my grooming table. I'm taking my Chris Christensen brush um, that is going to be linked below. I'm going to give her a good brush out. Um, make sure that there's no knots or anything. Since we are trimming her up and using, um, we're going to be skimming a guard comb on her hair. So since we're doing that, we have to make sure that she's brushed and combed all the way through. Um, otherwise that finished look isn't going to look the way we want it to. So in order to get that perfect look at the end, we gotta make sure that she's fully brushed and combed. All right, now that I have brushed and combed her, I am going to take my shears. They are the Kenchi Rosé shears. I'll go ahead and link some below as well. I'm gonna start off by trimming the hair on her feet. Um, just because it's the first and easiest thing to get down. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and round them out. I already did her nails and shaved her pads. Um, that was in the video, so I did that first, um, which makes it easier to round out those feet. Um, and it's just one of the first things that I do in my grooming process with every single dog. So I'm going to go ahead and trim behind and round out those paws. take my clippers and I'm taking my wall two guard and I have a 15 Arturo blade underneath this two guard um, you can do a 30 blade underneath but I found that the 30 blades tend to break under the guard combs and we don't want breaking any of our blades because then when we can't use them we gotta throw them out and buy new ones so we just avoid that by using the 15 blade underneath the two guard and what I'm doing here is skimming I'm not pressing down to the skin I am simply skimming the hair to give it that nice rounded look. Um, I can do this with my shears, but the guard comb does make it a little go by a little bit faster, and especially, especially since I'm scissoring all day every day, um, my, tens, my hands tend to cramp up and get tired. So I'm just taking the guard comb, skimming it over, um, giving that nice little rounded look. I'm gonna take it on the back legs, the side of the legs, the stomach, uh, and chest area. The entire back, I kind of don't touch, I don't trim it up, I kind of just leave that alone and blend it into everything else.
see that I'm scissoring her feathers on her front leg. I don't really take the guard comb down her front legs. I usually just shear those. So I comb it upwards and I take my shears and I'll fluff it. You can see I just fluffed it there. Um, so I'm constantly using my shears to fluff up hair and make sure that I'm trimming everything, um, not leaving any little stray hairs behind. Um, so I go ahead and do that and then I might fix up her stomach while I'm down there as well. from the side view how well her body looks rounded and nicely shaped compared to before. Um, so this just gives her a nice all-around trim up without damaging that beautiful coat that she has. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to click to subscribe and we'll see you next time. for me she's so well behaved and knows the process really well so I'm gonna go ahead and shave her with my Arturo 10 blade um, on her face and her feet just because she's a lighter colored dog and if I do any shorter of a blade then it'll make her skin really irritable and it could scab up so I do a little bit longer just because she's so sensitive so I'm just gonna do the, the typical standard poodle face which is just shaving her snout and by it back by her ear so I'm gonna start by lifting her ear up Good girl. And what you're gonna do basically is create a line from the ear to the eye. So I'm gonna shave a little bit of the ear part here first. And then this is all in reverse. So I'm gonna reverse it by her eye, by her ear, so down her jawline. Over her eyelid. Lift her up a little bit, go down here. Alright, and then for by her mouth right here, so we're gonna stretch it back so that we don't cut her lip at all. I'm gonna go ahead. Make sure you're getting in here. Be very careful though because it can be dangerous. And the mouth usually folds at this spot right here, so you want to make sure that you're getting that little bit ahead. Lifting her head up. I usually bring the line just around the jawline down the bottom of the chin right here. On show poodles, it's going to be a little bit of a different cut. This is just basically for at home grooms. careful for these flaps too because you don't want to cut those. Stretch that back. Get out of snow right here.
front of the eyes right here. And then these sides will get a little bit more cleaned up when I trim them with my shears. I just haven't done any trimming on her head yet. Alrighty, and that is how you shave a standard poodle face. So I'll kind of show you, usually I, he is on some sort of medication like CBD or something, but he's not on anything today, so we're going to kind of see how he does. I'll show you, you can already tell he just doesn't, he knows the clippers, he doesn't like them. Um, so you can see that he's just not a fan of the clippers at all. So it, it can be really difficult to do, you know, do a full groom on a little dog like this without using clippers. I know a lot of people do like all over scissor cuts, but that is extremely time consuming and it's really difficult for a lot of people. So he's a lot better with his feet than anything. Usually he'll let me get his feet done. I've been grooming him for a really long time, so we've kind of had a little bit of time to get used to each other, and over time he's gotten a little bit better with the clippers. So you'll see, I'm just going to shave his back pad so I can put his nails on here. You can see he's not too bothered by this, he's a little bit more used to it. And it's mostly by his head that he's going to have the problem. Remember, we're going to do what's most comfortable for them, not what's most comfortable for us. So just keep that in mind as you're grooming. And, you know, his parents are very understanding that he's not going to get groomed, you know, as maybe as well as a dog that does like the clippers. Um, you know, it's more of a safety concern than anything. So we want to make sure that he's safe and doesn't get too stressed out. So we're just going to do the best we can and we're going to call that a comfort groom. All right, now as far as his haircut is concerned, I usually do a five on the body and either a four or a three and three quarters on the legs. Um, so I'll put the right on there. And this is gonna be where it starts to get a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna start to that scrunch up a little bit. It's really easy to cut dogs like this, guys, so be extra, extra careful and kind of know your limits and be smart about it. We don't want to put anyone in danger. It's just not worth it at the end of the day. But like I said, I've been grooming trainer for a long time, so we know each other pretty well. We kind of know the drill by now as much as we can. So we need to really keep that a little bit just so I can take them off. And I try to kind of move my hands around as I'm shaving because if he feels my hand before he feels the blade he's going to be a little bit more comfortable because I'm already touching him. I'm not like just putting this vibrating thing on him. I'm starting off with my hand first so he kind of gets that little bit of the human touch and kind of maybe knows it a little bit better. and everything and the extra skin where you're holding them up and everything so 
shaving around the legs is where it gets really a little bit more dangerous than the rest of the body. And this is something that can be trimmed too, um, but I prefer to shave it. I want to get them used with the clippers. And like I said earlier, scissoring is a lot more time consuming. So if you're trying to not take, you know, hours to do a small dog, you're going to choose the clippers over scissoring. to his head because this is the part that is the absolute worst for him so there's a lot of different ways to go about this and you just take clippers just turn them on just turn them on make sure you got one hand on them at all times so nobody falls off the cage just gonna go hold behind his ears So I'm not super worried about like taking the clippers to his head, but what I really like to do is, you know, shape by those eyes. So I'm going to take my ten blade, and this one's just going to be a little bit of a tricky one. So we're going to do the same thing. You can even hold their ears a little bit, but if you do that, make sure you're doing it very gently. So I'm going to hold it, hold his chin a little bit. Yeah. Right. Let's do this, push your finger. I'm not touching the clippers through them at all. I'm just rubbing my finger. See how slow? See how slow I was moving? Very, very slow. Do it again. Do it again. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. There we go. So I was able to He's got a little hair suit up by his nose. But you can see I shave right here by his eyes. So that was a really, really good thing. So now I'm just going to go ahead and trim up around him. Um, you know, he does get a little bit nervous for that. But, you know, it's just, it's the clippers that he's most worried about. So as soon as I trim up his feet a little bit, we will be right back. All right, so if you're wondering how I kind of blend the legs um, since I just shaved the bottom half, so I'm just going to start off with a paw first, turn it how I normally do, and he gets short paws. So don't let the muzzle fool you. She does really good for the grooming process, but is just not a fan of her nails at all. So we're going to show you um, the tips and tricks that I use to trim dog's nails. I don't like it. There's different ways to hold them, different ways to move around. Uh, of course, it's going to get to the point sometimes where, you know, it's just not worth the stress for the dog. And in that case, you know, we turn them away and may have the pet owners take them to the vet. But we definitely try to get it done as long as it's safe for both you and the dog. So the first way I'm going to try it is by taking her leg and putting it back like that. I know you like this. So I'm going to take this pop. Oh, I know you're okay. I'm just going to see how I'm holding her. Just hold her head back. I know you're okay. Thanks. 
next. So I'm going to lower her down. Put this up a little bit. Hold her neck a little bit better in place, but not enough to obviously choke or anything. Put my leg. <laughs> Just got that whole paw done. All right, so now this last part, paw is gonna be the trickiest just because of the way that my table is, the way that I trim the nails, the way that my body's set up. It's just gonna be, it's, gonna be, it's harder for me to do this one. Just be a grumpy. 
worked with aggressive dogs for about six years. So I am used to it. And I know when to cut it off. I know when it's too much for the dog. I know when I'm able to do it. And I just did the last two, no problem. So sometimes it takes some time. I've had dogs that I started out like this with muzzles and then a couple months later they don't need muzzles at all. So it just takes some time to get them used to you. Make sure you go very, very slow. Everything will be fine. We'll get used to it. Hope that helps, guys. See, Molly's a sweet girl, huh, baby? Yeah. Make sure you click that button to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.
see Pumi's very often. I have, she's the only one that I've seen in seven years of grooming. So they're definitely more of a rare breed, but she's super cute. So I already gave her a bath, blow dry, uh, did her nails, pads, and shaped her sanitary area. Now I'm taking a two guard. And I'm gonna take all this length off of her. I see her about every six weeks. So Poonies have very specific grooming styles as far as their face goes mostly. So I'll go over that more when we get there. And then also at the end of her grooming, we actually wet her back down. So do the bath, blow dry, groom her, make her look all pretty. And then we're gonna take our hose and we're gonna kind of mist her all over and wet her back down. And what that does is it gives her that curly poony coat. So she still looks like a poony and when she dries, she'll still be groomed, but she has all of her little curls back. Because when we dry her with the velocity dryer, most of all those curls are gonna kind of come out and be dried straight. So definitely have to groom her first. We'll take this card all over. Just like a typical grooming for this body. A lot of them get hand scissors, but that takes hours of work. And especially since we're wetting her down, you're not going to be able to tell that she was hand scissors or not either way. She's very well behaved. She had a rumor in California that table trained her very, very well. So she knows the process. Knows everything what to do. Alright. So we're taking her down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of her body. And then we will go ahead and use our shears and trim up her feet. Alright, so now I'm taking my curved shears and I'm gonna go ahead and trim up all her feet. Uh, I do like to leave them rounded because she's got that fluffier look. Even once we wet her down and she has those curls, she's still going to have a fluffier look to her. So I want to give them a nice rounded look. We don't want to take them too crazy short. Top and 
shorter down here, so it's going to be like a diagonal cut kind of. So you have shorter and it's longer.
is shaving right their lips right here. A lot of dogs won't like it, but if you are able to do it, it makes a big difference just in the way they look. It looks a lot more clean. It's one of those things that's like, wow, and they look really good and you can't pinpoint it, but it really, really makes a difference. Faces. So that's what a, a poopy face should look like. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Now I did use an over on the face, but that might change based off of, you know, what you're using on the body or what the owner wants. But that is how you do the style of the face. So I'm going to clean everything up and then we can wet her down and just... Alright guys, so now I have her in the tub and we put this on misting mode. So we're gonna go ahead and mist her down really quick. Then I'm gonna rub my hands. See how she's not soaking wet, but she's damp. And then that way, when she goes home, she will dry and be curly. It is a little cold outside, but mom will let her in right away and keep her warm. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of her body, and then she'll be ready to go home. And that's how you groom a poogie. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.